What is going on you guys and welcome back to another how-to video here on the Sergeant Tank YouTube channel. If you haven't done so already, do me a favor right now, go ahead and smash that subscribe button, put on those post notifications for any future updates, and with that being said, let's go ahead and get to the video. All right, you guys, so what we're gonna actually be taking a look here uh, within this video is a tutorial on how to go about breeding your orange lyretail killifish. The same principle will apply to other killifish and other non-live bearing species and so forth, just to keep that in mind. However, what you're looking at here is a well-established 10-gallon system, a natural ecosystem here. However, there isn't many natural plants in this tank. And the reason that is to make my life logistically and so forth go a little bit more smoothly by just utilizing the spawning mops. These are 100% acrylic, all natural spawning mops. Um, so they are aquarium safe. I do customize and make these at 12 inch in length, which I uh, find do very, very well in many different variables and so forth and, and situations depending on what you're breeding. But with that being said, you can see that I have some of the uh, Pomacea uh, gold mystery snails in there. We got some ram's horn snails, other uh, various snails and, and so forth. And a few floating plants, which you're not gonna be able to see too well. Lots of algae on the glass, which I love to see. Uh, some mom detritus and so forth have a top leaf there in the back you're looking at a total dissolved solids in this tank ranging anywhere from right around the 250 to 400 range uh, depending on uh, the regimen and so forth as far as water changes typically with this tank i can keep a overall balance and keep the uh, the overall nitrate level in check and not have to worry about issues as far as ammonia or nitrite spiking. And I can simply do weekly top offs with a five to 10% water change on a bi weekly basis. And this uh, is ran on a single uh, nano sponge filter back there. So simple as that. These guys will breed uh, throughout the week. So what I recommend doing is setting yourself up a 10 gallon tank, get yourself a pair, which we still have depending on when you see this video. Two pairs, proven breeding pairs, that is, of your orange liar tailored killifish. Well, I want to say we have three spawning mops in this tank. And again, nothing else in there. You'll see the female right here. And they'll constantly be going in and out of this, in and out, in and out. So the reason I don't keep uh, plants such as the Nahas grass or even, you know, you see how thick that is. Or even up here in this tank. Uh once they deposit the eggs you can actually condition these guys over and kind of teach them to go in this spot because this is quote unquote their safe haven or a safety net for them in order to actually uh, deposit the eggs where they can become you know fertilized and so forth and actually uh, begin the state of, of uh, those embryos growing and at that point which we'll take a look at here in a couple of moments is actually removing taking a look and see what the eggs look like and look at that process thereafter however just a bare bone minimum, recommend a 10 gallon size. Keep the pH range anywhere between 7, 7, 8, 1. Completely fine. Uh, well seeded in season tank, utilizing some substrate for a good beneficial bacteria buildup. Uh, Catapa leaf, uh, tannins in the tank. Uh, sponge filter is completely fine. If you want to add natural plants to the tank, definitely even makes the ecosystem better. The reason I do it this way is just due to the fact of uh, being able to make it a little bit more ease on myself when I want to obtain the embryos or the eggs in order to actually remove them to artificially raise, uh, which is definitely a recommendation I have is to go ahead and remove the eggs, which we're gonna look at right now. All right, you guys, so what we're taking a look at here is one of the spawning mops for which is actually uh, housing one of the killifish eggs. You can see right there. Uh, so it kind of gives you an indicator of uh, what they're going to look like. And then soon these embryos, as they start developing, you'll notice the eyes, which would be a black uh, indentation with inside that, uh, that embryo. So what I like to do is just very carefully take a pair of tweezers like so and you can go ahead and just kind of get underneath it and then i'll go ahead and transfer that which we'll take a look at here in just a few moments of what i do uh, once i actually do the transferring process but let's continue on here i'm going to see if there's any more uh, within this spawning mop i do like to pull these guys about every 48 hours opportunist uh, when it comes to uh, depositing and laying of the eggs so what that means is 
Uh, you might find, you know, if you come here every 48 hours, you might find eight one time, come back another 48 hours thereafter, and then you could find three, come back another 48 hours, you could have find 13, you know, it's just, uh, just kind of a, kind of a baseline there. So, uh, again, they are opportunists when it comes to uh, depositing, and uh, I definitely recommend uh, this method if you're looking at a good yield and production. Uh, so let's continue on, take a look at the other maps, and uh, I'll let you know if we find anything else. All right, you guys, so this is actually a map from another tank of the orange uh, lyretail killifish, but you can see another one here. Um, that was the only one out of that other pair that I was able to obtain, but like I said, I do come through about every 24 to 48 hours. Uh, try not to push it much past that, and uh, so I'm just going to go through same process here you can see another one so we got a total of three so far between the the, the two pairs and uh, this this pair here uh, that this is now the third one that we've obtained uh, from this pair is actually listed on the website so it just goes to show these are a proven pair um, I generally like to do that with a lot of different uh, species that we breed here in the in the fish rooms is before we uh, release them for sale is uh, you know since they are being sold as a breeding pair a proven breeding pair I want to validate to ensure uh, that they are viable from that standpoint so just quick looking through here I don't see anything else within this mop so kind of give you an idea of what I mean so let's go ahead and back the camera out what I like to do is just take a take a light and then just hold it up start right from the top a lot of times they like to deposit the eggs right at the the top up here so just be careful as you're going through um, and just slowly work your way around and then as you get more familiar with the process and get more comfortable with it you'll start to be able to do this um, quite quickly and uh, just because if you end up overlooking which oftentimes uh, could could definitely be the case just remember when you're coming through you know every 48 hours or so uh, that's why I like to do that so every couple of days as you're pulling these out even if you did overlook you don't have to worry too much about anything you know happening with that specific embryo so definitely just keep that in the back of your mind um, if, if something was overlooked so go ahead and get this back in the tank and let's take a look at the rest of the process all right you guys so I'm pulling the last mop here and uh, this is from the other second pair which we still have available on the website depending on when you guys are seeing this uh, so again another embryo here I'm gonna go ahead and pull off and uh, just continue through this mop here so based on that just goes to show I have three different pairs of uh, the orange lyre tail Achilles fish and they're all viable uh, as far as uh, reproduction so uh, let's go take a look at uh, the the fry rack system I'm going to show you how to go and uh, begin the process of actually artificially raising these guys and we'll sit down and uh, talk about that for a little bit. So stay tuned, and uh, we'll be right back. All right, you guys, so this was the transfer container from what you've seen. Uh, so we have the eggs here, the embryos within this. And what I like to do is just take some uh, cordon, methylene blue, uh, based on the amount of water I am going to add uh, more to this up to about right here. And uh, just take into account for that. Just right around two and a half milliliters full, like so. Just carefully kind of mix that up. All right, you guys, so what I like to use is basically a quarter of the uh, cycled aquarium water and then the rest uh, just about half inch or inch from the top uh, with this specific container of uh, already pre-dechlorinated uh, tap water. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead, find a spot for it on the fry rack system, add aeration to it, I'll label it just like I do here. You'll see I pulled 13 back on October the 22nd. This one over here, uh, we have seven that we pulled back on October the 12th. 
Uh, we got one of them in here, which is on growing out. If we can try to focus in here. So you can see one of them here on uh, grow out, lots of mom in this specific and that will eat off that mom constantly throughout the day. And how you build up with that mom is a balance between lighting, uh, minerals that are in here with natural plants, a uh, couple of uh, seeded bio balls, as well as a catapa leaf. So the catapa leaf is really what helps develop this, this uh, mom that you see all around the container and I absolutely love it so it makes my life uh, quite a bit uh, more at ease and not have to worry if I end up uh, missing a feeding or something like that but that guy at that size is currently just feeding off from microworms so start them out with vinegar eels microworms and eventually you can transition them over like a powder form like a tetracolor granule crush up into a powder form so um, yeah so hopefully that makes sense to you guys I'm going to take care of this and we'll see you back here in just a moment. All right, you guys, so I hope that you enjoyed that how to tutorial with the orange light tail killifish. They're definitely a stunning killifish. Feel free and check out everything out down in the description below with a little bit more information in regard to links and uh, some other pertinent information that may have been left out in this video and so forth. So, anything there, you should be able to find it down in the description below. Give, give this a big thumbs up like share again make sure you guys are subscribed put on those post notifications for any future updates and i do plan on bringing more how to's to you guys because i know that's something you guys have been asking for a bit of time now it's just a matter of making the time and uh just bear with me in the process but i will be having more how to tutorials and breeding tutorials and so forth here in the future so with that being said you guys as always stay encouraged keep on keeping on happy fishing and we'll talk to you guys right back here on the next one